Hello everyone, this is DA from me Academy. In the previous video, we have talked about the stiffness matrix and if we have a certain problem with a certain boundary condition, then how we can solve this problem in order to find the displacements or the displacement vector. So mainly there were two things that we need to find out in order to get the displacement vector. The first thing is the stiffness matrix and that is very um, easy because in, a lo in the local level or in the local coordinate system we only need to find the stiffness matrix for a single element and then we have to just elevate them because the because the a and the length of each element is same throughout the case. So if we have to elevate them the structure would be like this because globally there are five nodes one two three four five so that is why there will be five column in this case and uh, this stiffness matrix is 3.92 minus 4.04 and that will be zero in the first row and minus 4.04 and 3.92 this is the case and we know that we have discussed in, in the previous videos that how we can assemble these local matrices in order to get a global matrix. So this again 3.92 and this minus 4.04 and this 0 and this 0 and this 0 again with minus 0 0.4.04 with 3.92 and again it's it will be um, plus 3.92 and 0 and this thing will go again and again. And we will end up with the stiffness matrix like this, but I am just going to remove it now because the other thing that we need to find is the force vector. For the force vector, uh, the definition is this. And here, this in the integral, minus x square is the force that is the given uh, is in the given differential equation. And this is psi i. Now the point here is that, is there uh, the same procedure for this integral to be solved just like the stiffness matrix? that we have to solve it for a single element and then we have to just uh, elevate them or assemble them to get the global stiffness matrix. Um, so so here this force is not for the local system or for each element level. This here force is for whole of the bar, whole the system. That is why we will not be able to just uh, solve it for a single element and then assemble them. We have to find it for each of these elements, right? So plug the definition of the psi here of this 1 minus x bar by the length and this will not work here because this x bar here is again for the element level. We have to change the definition and we know what is the main definition for the psi 1 that is x minus x a divided by the length that is x b minus x a. It was x b minus x and the length and x minus x a and the length. So this here is for the global system. We are not going to use this definition here but we are used are going to use this definition here again there will be two integrals like this for each of the nodes so this is for the node one then we will plug x psi one of this here and if this is for the node two then we're going to put the psi two here so let's write it down we're going to solve it here if we're going to take the integral of all of these this thing this here is for this node one and this here is for the second node right so if we remove e here with the one, then it will be the first element. If we uh, replace e with the two, then it will be for the second element. And then x a and x b will be changed accordingly because this x a will be zero, and then uh, x b will be 0.25. And the second element x a would be 0.25 and x b would be 0.5. And here x b x a are the constant terms. Only x is the one that is a variable and uh, and we have to take the integral uh, with respect to the x uh, variable as well. So take the integral then the output will be after solving these two integrals the output will be for the first node uh, the force on the first node and the force on the second node. Now in order to find the forces of the node this and this for the first element we have to just plug um, the length that is 0.25 xb for the first element again that is 0.25 and x a that is zero. So if we plug these credentials in both of these q1 and q2, then we will be able to find a discrete value for the force on this node and the force on this node. And the same goes for the other element. If we plug x um, a for the second node 0.25 and x b as 0.5 in this, and the same goes for this, we'll be having a discrete value for this these two nodes for the element 2. 
So after plugging these things, we're able to find four set of forces for each of these elements or for each of these N nodes for these elements. Uh, so I'm just going to write out the forces values that we will be uh, that we will be getting after plugging the values for x a and x b for each of the element. So you can solve it at your end to see uh, if you get the same values for these discrete forces at these ends of each element. So these are the forces that is on each of the end for each element. Initially, we found the stiffness matrix, and now we have the forces. Now it's time to assemble all of these all of this information in order to find. Uh, the displacement and the main structure, stiffness matrix time the displacement vector is equal to the force vector. So now we're going to plug the values that we have. So this is the stiffness matrix, the global stiffness matrix that we have. This is the displacement vector that we have. So here we have to write the force vector and we are going to assemble this information here just like the stiffness matrix because this is the first node, right? So we're going to write the minus point zero zero one three like this here the force of this this is the force on the second node of the first element right and this is the force here again on the first node of the second element so we are going to add this information here so this would be minus 0 0.182 and we will be doing the same with this information that it will be going to add uh, the force that is on the same node right so we are going to write this information down here. So now we have this complete information here. This is the stiffness matrix, this is the displacement vector, and this is the force vector. Now it's time to plug into the boundary conditions that we have. We know that displacement at the first end is equal to zero, and the displacement at the other end is also equal to zero, which implies that this u1 is equal to zero, and this u5 is equal to zero, because this is u1, this is u2, u3, u4, and u5. So because there is no displacement on the two ends, as the road is fixed, that is why there will be displacement on the and will be on the three, these three nodes, u2, u3, and u4. So you plug zero at these ends, then the thing that we need to solve is we have three unknowns and we have three equations and we'll define u2, u3, and u4 from this set of equations, right? So I'm going to write the answers for u2 and u3 and u4. It's your task actually to for the same values for u2, u3 and u4. So these are the values for u2, u3 and u4. And this is the main task to find the displacement vector or the displacement values for uh, the system. And we got the values for u2, u3 and u4. And there will be some post-processing in the question that you may be asked to find Q, capital Q1, or any load, or stiffness, or stress value, right? So you can find it easily according to the formulas uh, or the main definitions of these things. So we have solved the example, and how here we have seen that how the stiffness matrix can be solved at a local level and then elevate them uh, like this. And we have seen also that if the force is not distributed on the whole uh, load and we have only a specific load that is at the global level, so how we can find the force vector on each of these nodes. So this is for now. Like for most of the videos, then you can subscribe to this channel to watch more upcoming videos. We will meet in the next video. Till then, take care. Goodbye.